Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her to his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. I want everybody to just take a moment and think about one person in your life who you truly love. Think about that person, whether it's your spouse, your parent, your child, your pastor. And as you think about that person, think about all of the ways that you go out of your way to show that person how much you truly love them. The way that you will go to no end to show them how much you care, how few limits you will put in letting that person know how much you truly care for them, how much you truly love them, how much you would do for them no matter what the circumstances may be. Now, looking at it from the other side, how do you know that that love is reciprocal? How would you be able to tell if that person whom you love with all your heart loves you as much as you love them? The answer, beloved people of God, is not in the words that they say, but it's in their actions. And here's what I'm talking about. As we turn our attentions back to the scripture at hand, what we find is a situation that most people would say is truly heartbreaking. For here we have nailed upon the cross, Jesus, a man who has just been beaten, he's just been humiliated, he's just been paraded through the town naked, he has been made a spectacle of, and then to top it all off, nailed to a cross between two thieves. And as he hangs there, the crowds gathered around to onlook, to mock, to make a spectacle of this event. In that crowd of people, you have two particular people who stand out. You have Jesus' own mother, and just a few feet away from her is the disciple listed as the one whom Jesus loves. And I can only imagine Mary, his mother, watching her son helplessly as Jesus hung there on that cross, knowing that that crown of thorns that they put on his head has got to be hurting her son, knowing that the nails that they have put in his hands and in his feet have left his body racked with pain, knowing that in just a short while, her baby boy was going to die. And the worst, there was nothing she could do about it. And then next to her, his disciple, whom Jesus loved, also watched in horror, watched in sorrow, knowing that his friend, his companion, his teacher, 
his buddy was hanging there, life slipping away from him. And again, realizing that there was nothing that he could do to come to the rescue of his friend. And as they watched this episode unfold, I can only imagine what was going on inside of Mary's head and in Mary's heart. I can almost hear her voice as a mother looking up at her child, having those moments of remembrance when her child was born in the barn on that night, how they struggled to find a place for them in the end. I can hear Mary remembering those nights when she sat up and nursed her baby boy back to health when he wasn't feeling well. I can hear Mary's tears remembering those moments when Jesus got his first baby tooth, when he took his first step, when he spoke his first word, all of those things that touched the heart of a mother, things that you never forget, that are locked in your heart and in your mind and makes that person special to you. Whenever your child walks into the room, no matter how old they might be, those memories just flood back and fill your heart. And now she's watching all of this as her son is hanging on that cross, filled with emotions. I can only imagine not only the tears that are flowing on the outside, but the anguish that she's feeling on the inside. But what would make that pain go away? Beloved people of God, here's where the love comes in on that story. As Jesus is on that cross going through all of the things that we just heard and will continue to hear as the other preachers come forward and bring their word. Jesus, in that moment, shows the entire world what true love looks like. He puts aside his own suffering. He puts aside his own dying. He puts aside his own pain to care for those who he truly loves. He looks out and realizes that his mother is going to be left with a hole in her heart that no one can fill. And if she went home alone, she would have that stuck in her mind until the good Lord called her home to glory. And so in that moment, he took that opportunity to comfort his mother. He said to his mother, this is my disciple, my friend. He's going to need someone to care for. He's gonna need someone to love him. Mother, receive him as your son. And then he turns to the disciple and says, my mother is going to have a hole in her heart that nothing can fill, but I want you to be her son in this moment. I want you to be the one to be with her and hold her hand when she's crying at night, remembering all of this in the days and weeks and years to come. I want you to be there to keep her company on those lonely nights when she's sitting there by herself wondering, where's my son? Beloved people of God, this is what love looks like. Having someone who is willing to put themselves aside to care for somebody else. Putting yourself aside, your own personal needs, wants, and desires so that you can care, provide for, extend love to someone else. As we began this sermon, I ask you all to think about someone who you truly love and the extent that you would go to show them how much you care about them, how much you love them how much you would do for them. I now ask you to look beyond that person 
And let's look out into this great, big, beautiful world that God created with love. What would this world look like if we were willing to put our own needs and wants and desires to the side to help someone else, to help a stranger in need, to help someone who's struggling, to help someone who's suffering, to help someone who's dying, to comfort someone who's gone through a lot of anguish in their own life. What would this world look like if each person would have that much love and compassion for their fellow human being? My response, oh, what a glorious world this would be. Beloved, I leave you with that challenge. From this day forward, let's show the world what true love looks like caring for one another, sharing with one another, loving one another, treating everybody as if they were truly your beloved. I'm going to ask the question, are we willing to give that a try? Are we willing to see if we can show the world what God love looks like? as we share it from ourselves out to those whom we encounter. And if the answer is yes, what you'll discover is that you have just made this world a little bit better than the way we found it. Amen? Amen. Amen.